St. Paul is writing this second letter to Timothy, his friend and now the one that Paul has entrusted to carry on his work in leading some of the earliest Christian communities of the church. And the letter today is heartfelt as we can hear. Paul is basically expressing his great sadness at the betrayal and disappointment at the hand of his friends. Everyone, it seems, has deserted him, just like they will do so many times over when the going gets tough. It happened in the life of Jesus on Calvary, only A few handful of people, including his mother, remained at the foot of the cross. Everyone else had fled in fear. And Paul is imprisoned, soon to be put to death. And all of those that he had counted on for support, for prayers and friendship have disappeared. He says, Luke is the only one with me the man whose feast we celebrate today, his great companion. Luke, who was a physician by trade, had come to the faith through the preaching of the apostles and journeyed with Paul on many, many of his visits to those early Christian communities. And Paul knows that he can rely on Luke for his friendship, his prayers, his loyalty. Isn't it true in life there are usually only a handful of people that we can count on completely with great trust? God sends those companions to us. They're a treasure, real friendship through thick and thin, not only when the times are good, but when the going gets tough. And we know that St. Paul writes over and over again in his letters that it is in his weakness that he is strong. He recounts all of the ways that people have tried to stop the preaching of the gospel, but they have failed. They have been unsuccessful because the power of God's word will always be stronger than any human effort. The Lord stood by me, St. Paul reminds us in our first reading, and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation of the word might be completed, so that all the Gentiles would hear it and come to faith. We know that St. Luke not only wrote the Gospel of Luke, but also the Acts of the Apostles. Two great books in the Christian Bible, inspired by God, but they give us a glimpse into the life of the early church. And St. Luke's care for healing the sick as a physician is something that is very vibrant to his own writing and teaching. St. Luke's gospel is a gospel of healing. He cares deeply for the poor, the marginalized, those that need to know the mercy of God, most especially the sinners. St. Luke's gospel over and over again highlights in great description, those episodes in the life of Jesus like the lost sheep, the people that he seeks out to heal, not only physically, but most especially to heal them of their sins. Remember the words Jesus always says after healing someone, go, you have been restored, but sin no more. The mercy of God that is at the front and center of the proclamation of the gospel. 
It's no accident that we hear in the Gospel of Luke the sending out of the, of the disciples, not one by one, but two by two. Jesus sends them out in pairs. We journey in the faith together, bound by faith, brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus. We, we don't gain salvation alone. We need one another. You know, when we receive Holy Communion, it's a visible sign of the unity that joins us not only to Jesus, but to the church. And the church is not a building. The church is the body of Christ. We are in communion with our brothers and sisters in faith. And that communion calls us to do exactly what those 72 disciples were sent to do to bring peace, to bring love, to bring the mercy and the compassion and the forgiveness of God to all of those around us, most especially as St. Luke knew so well, the people who need to hear that message most. I'm always reminded of what Pope Francis says over and over again, something we need to hear and take to heart. The church is not a haven for saints. It's a hospital for sinners. That's why we're here, not because we're holy. None of us are holy. We're on the journey of becoming holy, to become perfect as God is perfect. We are sinners, and if we fail to grasp that reality, we can't be healed. Pope Francis also reminds us that God never gets tired of forgiving anyone. We just get tired of asking. How often do we go to confession? How often in humility do we recognize our faults? It's so easy to point them out in others, to be judgmental. But do we honestly reflect every day on our own sins, our own failings, our need for the mercy and the compassion and the healing that God wants to give to us so desperately. And so we remember Luke, a great witness, a great companion, a trusted friend, a loyal proclaimer of the good news, one who invites us like him to walk the journey of faith with each other, brothers and sisters joined to the Lord Jesus in faith and in grace so that we can dispense what so many people desperately need today, the gift of peace, the gift of God's love, the mercy and healing that come to all of us who hear the word of God, take it to heart, and strive every day to live as Jesus invites us to live.